Hello and welcome to a Rygate Maths video. My name is Simon and in this video we're going to be focusing on the topic from the first year, Mechanics Unit of Variable Acceleration, extending on the ideas from the previous video, this time looking at integration. So in the previous video looking at differentiation, we saw that there was a link between displacement, velocity and acceleration. The link being that if we differentiate displacement, we get velocity, and then if we differentiate velocity, we get acceleration. As we know from the work on calculus that you've done previously, integration is the reverse of differentiation, which means that this process works backwards. So we know that velocity is therefore the integral of acceleration and then displacement is the integral of velocity. Obviously in terms of integration we are going to be having constants of integration and we're going to use boundary conditions such as knowing the initial velocity, initial displacement, things like that um, to be able to calculate our constant of integration. So this is the first example we're going to look at. Again, remember that the key thing with this topic is to notice that our acceleration has t's in it, so our acceleration is not constant. If your acceleration is constant, you'll be doing a SUVAT type question. In this case, it is a differentiation or integration question. Okay, so that is something to pay attention to. In fact, this is variable because a is some function of t. Okay, it has t's in it, it's not constant. So we're given some information here, we've been given the initial velocity and we know the acceleration and we want to find the velocity after two seconds. So we know that v is the integral of a, so that is the integral of 2t minus 2 with respect to t. Okay, It's very, very important that you write this step as it details to the examiner, you know what you're doing. Then it's just a case of normal integration, integrating with respect to t. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power. And let's not forget our plus c. This is very important because we're going to be using this to work out the plus c. So when t is 0, v is 1, so c is 1. So therefore, our velocity is t squared minus 2t plus 1. We now can answer the question when t equals 2, v equals 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is again 1 meters per second. Part b, find the time where the object is at rest. So we know it's at rest tells us that the velocity is 0. So therefore, t squared minus 2t plus 1 equals 0. Now in this case, we only have one time where the velocity is 0, so only one time where the object is at rest. In other questions, depending on what this looks like, you might have multiple ones. So therefore the object is at rest after one second. Part C. Find the displacement after two seconds. So what we're doing is we are integrating velocity. Now there are a couple of ways we can do this. After two seconds 
is in the first two seconds. So it's going from time is zero to time is two. So what we can do is integrate, put some numbers in, work out our new plus C, and then put in T is two. Or if we're certain that this curve, this velocity, does not go below the x-axis, the horizontal axis, which in this case it doesn't, because it only is at rest for one, at one point, we can actually do integration between limits. Okay, so we're doing between 0 and 2, t squared minus 2t plus 1. Again, integrate as normal. And then put our numbers in. And we get 2 over 3 meters. And that's our first example. Very straightforward in terms of the process, but the thing students typically find difficult about this is translating the words into the maths. The key thing is that if you have variable acceleration, you are definitely doing differentiation or integration. And what will change will depend on what information you're given right at the start. Here we know that A is linear, but it's got a T in it. So we know we're integrating. So here's our second example. A particle P is projected from a point O at time T equals zero. The particle moves in a straight line with acceleration given there. When T equals four, the velocity of the particle is 8.5 meters per second. Find an expression for the velocity of the particle in terms of t. Now projectiles is a big topic from the second for the second year, but in terms of looking at this side of things with the integration, we do it now. So again, we find an expression for velocity. We know velocity is the integral of acceleration. So we are integrating 3t minus 2. Again, integrate normally. And we know that when t equals 4, v equals 8.5. So therefore, 8.5 equals 3 over 2 times 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus c. Now in terms of working with the previous example, I just kind of rearranged straight away because t was zero. In this case, I'll actually work out various bits to make sure everything's going according to plan. So, we've got three over two times four squared minus two times four, which gives us 16. So C is seven, uh, minus 7.5. Obviously, we could write that as 15 over 2 if we wanted to, but either's fine. So therefore, V equals 3 over 2 T squared minus 2 times T minus 7.5. Find the acceleration of the particle when the direction of motion of P changes. So this is when P V goes from positive to negative, or vice versa. The point where this happens is when V is at rest. So what we need to find is the time when v is at, when the particle is at rest and then find the acceleration at that time so when v equals 0 
we get 3 over 2 t squared minus 2t minus 7.5 equals 0. So 3t squared minus 4t minus 15 equals 0. Factorizing, we're going to have 3t and t. And then we're going to have plus 5 and minus 3. So therefore, t is minus 5 over 3 and 3. Now obviously time can't be negative, so therefore particle changes directions, direction when t equals 3. Therefore acceleration is 3 times 3 minus 2, which is 7 meters per second squared. Now looking at part C, find the distance of the particle from O when t is 6. So in this case, we're not finding the area under the curve. We are find That is the distance travelled or displacement travelled. Here, we are finding the x-coordinate when t is 6, or the, the, the coordinate of s when t is 6. So here, we know that s is the integral of v. So unlike the previous example, we're not doing limits. We are going to find our expression in terms of t with a plus c on the end, find the plus c, then put in t is 6. So when t equals 0, the displacement equals 0. How do we know that? It's projected from a point O at time t is 0. So the displacement is 0 when t is 0, which means that c is 0. Okay, so therefore s is a half t cubed minus t squared minus 7.5t plus 0. So when t equals 6, s equals a half times 6 cubed minus 6 squared minus 7.5 times 6, which we stick in our calculator and we get that it's 27 meters. And that's two basic examples using integration with variable acceleration. Obviously in this case we've been dealing with polynomial calculus. The ideas that we've discussed in this video here do not change into the second year mechanics. All that is different is what you are able to integrate and how. Next year, so in the second year content, there is an extra bit on top which involves doing this with vectors. So those of you who are keen to see what's going on there, you can find the separate video on our channel. Thank you for watching.